Hi, good morning, Ethan. Hello. Hi. Hey, Larry, how are you? Good morning, Ethan. Yeah, I'm doing good. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. All good. Just uh, good. in office, but uh, can attend this. Uh, yeah. Sorry for the late. Yeah, no problem. No problem. So, is it a 9:30 or 10:30 there? It's 10:30. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. Because something some because it's follow AEST right uh, or AEDT. I think it is AEST here uh, because okay. in Perth, in, uh, Perth and Northern Territory it is uh, okay. two hours, two and a half hour difference. Okay. 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 No problem. Yeah. So we'll start with okay. So okay. Let's yeah. go. Let's go. Yeah. yeah. Sure. So can you see my screen? The slides. Yes, I can. I can okay. see a your still appearing. Okay, okay, sure. Let me full screen it. Yeah. So first, uh, to, today we will be starting with the payroll process. So before we start, just I wanted to know, have you ever uh, worked on any payroll processes in the, or any other, I mean, not only SAP or any other uh, payroll, just, uh, just to know the background? Uh, not actually, no, okay. I'm not. Your means in terms of process also you're brand new to the payroll processes, whether it is SAP or Oracle or any pay, it doesn't matter, okay, so, this payroll I know I have some idea about it, but mm -hmm. uh, in the system, I have not worked. Okay, okay, that's fine. Yeah, just let me know you're comfortable whenever because I'll be today discussing the payroll processes. Then, uh, if time permits, then we'll be going ahead with the uh, Australia specific payroll process. Uh, then, all right, we'll proceeding right. further because for understanding anything, if you're going for before going to any system, it's better always to understand the processes the first. So that is the priority mm -hmm. for any consultant like us. So I'm not going to very details of the payroll processes because uh, in payroll processes there are yes. levels of processes. Okay, so it may or may not be applicable, but the generic one I'll be sharing. Okay. So this will be our agenda. So first uh, 20 minutes, 20, I'll be discussing the payroll, 15, 20 minutes, payroll, payroll, 20 minutes, payroll, minutes payroll processes. Payroll processes. L0, L, L1 processes. L0, L, L1 processes. Is it echoing yeah. my voice? No, no, not at all. Okay, good. Okay. So then we'll be followed by basics of Australian right. payroll. In Australian yeah. payroll, today I'll be discussing about four things. So demography is of which is the basic one then national employment standards that we call nes okay it is not like your onboarding nes <laughs> it's a, so it's a national employment standard specific for australian payroll yeah. then tax and reporting uh, which is the basics uh, taxes and reporting that you already knowing but still i'll be focusing part of the taxes and reporting in general in the latest one also i've updated and the leaves there is something called fair law Okay, so what are the three types of leaves and how it affects the payroll okay, that we'll be discussing, then followed by the QA. If you have any questions, five last five, ten minutes we'll be focusing on that. So isn't nice clear for you or anything? All good. Okay. So we will be starting with the basic payroll process. So I have taken the it from nothing from success factor process library itself. Okay. So when I say payroll processes. So, uh, you have have you ever worked on any process specific tool like Visio or any other tools, Aries? Uh, yeah, I, yeah. Okay. I mean, okay. Yeah. Okay. So you have also customized client specific. You must have customized those uh, specific to the client processes, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Once I worked on that kind of project, yes. Okay. Okay, because I many of times I have to work in very process specific uh, this kind of workshop as well. So some there are other teams also working on that in my current company. But still, it is better to know one or two tools uh, 
like Aries or Virgo is the basic common one. So anyway, it's the one. So what Aries or some other tools? Uh, so there are many other tools. Business process modeling tool we call it BPML. Okay. So you must knowing L zero. There are different levels of process. L zero means the top level, root level processes. So he, when it comes to the payroll, we have as per SAP uh, or in general, we have four basic uh, L zero level processes. That is the pre payroll, run payroll, post payroll, and followed by the periodical activities. So whatever we do on a day to day basis, generally that comes under the last bucket. Okay, that is a periodical activity. Suppose we are putting a reimbursement. Okay, as per the company policies, and suppose it is paid every seven days or every fifteen days. Okay, so generally that comes under periodical activity. Okay? So when I say pre payroll, what are the activities we do before running the payroll? Okay. So it can be master data updation on a regular basis or before just for payroll, we have put a cutoff date. Okay. Suppose uh, every month 15th or every month 22, uh, if it is a monthly payroll and your monthly payment is a 25th of particular month. Okay. Or last working day of that particular pay month. Okay. So in that case, what are the activities we do? We do when I say we, that is the payroll administrator or the payroll process manager. Who are the part of the responsible for the uh, completing the payroll admin activities? So, what are the activities they have to do in the pre payroll? So, that we'll be discussing. Okay. So, when I say run payroll, the second one, so during the uh, whenever you are running the payroll, what are the things you do? Okay, so on some activities you do in the system, some activities you do, uh, some manual or some communications also to be sent in different, different parties. Okay. So, when it would be exactly done that we'll be discussing in the run payroll so once your payroll is run so for ex what what could be the example for the communicating to different parties like when i'm running the payroll hmm. what sort of communication for example uh -huh. i'll be coming to that so whenever you're running the payroll it is not like you are directly running in the live system okay. before running you will be running some dry run or simulation run we call that in technically so whenever you are running a simulation run then you just came to know that there are some um, bank data is missing okay so when i say bank data is missing particular data so you'll be communicating with your say uh, there is another set of people or hr people who are responsible for maintaining the master data okay so you'll be sending alert to them directly it is uh, when, when i'm saying alert it is directly coming from EC payroll. Okay. Otherwise, it may happen you're uh, you're sending an email to them or you are just calling them over phone. Okay. So that can be one of the example. Or say I'll be giving another example. Yeah. Say, okay. yeah, some text text related information is missing in Australia. It's a TFN, we call it TFN. You must be knowing, right? Text file number. Yeah. So suppose text file number is missing for set, for all the new joinees who have joined recently and suppose a third party person when I say third party person it can be your internal person as well like HR or another person who takes care of suppose you have outsourced a particular part of your job to a third party who is responsible for updating all those uh, TFN for the new employees. Okay. okay. So in that okay. case, you will be getting back and forth with them before means during the run. Uh, when I, I'll not be saying running the during the running the payroll, rather one or two days before. Whenever you came to know that in the simulation run, there is some error because uh, some data is missing. Yeah. So in that case, you will be just reaching out to them and getting it updated. So those can be the scenarios. Okay. I'm just giving the rough examples. So there can be other scenarios as well that will be coming in the L1 okay. processes. Okay. Okay. So that can okay. be the run payroll in that run payroll processes. Okay. Once your uh, run payroll is done, when I say done, the meaning of the done is here. Your live payroll is run. Okay. When I say simulation run, it is not a run. Particular means just for your reference. Okay. Guys, just for a health checkup, like of the payroll. Okay. But actual run is the live payroll. When the production payroll is done, then you are done with your the second process, uh, process group. Okay, that is a run payroll. So I will refer this as a process group rather. Pre payroll, pay run payroll, post payroll, periodical activities, all are process groups here. Okay. Or root level process group, you can say. 
So that is your definition of the run payroll. So once it is done, so next process group is your post payroll. Okay. So when I say post payroll, what you do? So generally, post payroll, the finance posting happens here in this process. If there's a finance posting, so every employee will be paid a particular amount of salary, the amount, and every employee will be tagged a particular cost center. Okay. So here the integration um, concept comes into picture. Whether you are using the finance or any other, mostly clients use uh, FICO if they are having SAP HR success factor within place. So it is very easily integrated in standard integration comes into picture. So they can directly do the payroll posting. So when I do oh, as a payroll process, generally who does that and how it is done, that will be discussing length in the upcoming sessions. So when I say payroll posting, what is the exact meaning? So whenever you are doing the posting, so every cost finance will be your finance will be having a particular cost center. There will be credit and debit. A particular cost center or a set of cost centers which which are responsible for uh, employee salary. So that will be actually uh, debited, and your employee specific cost center. Okay, that will be credited. So those kind of debit and credit are kept, those data is captured in your finance. Okay. So that is a measured activity in your post payrolls. Once your uh, payroll posting is done, once your payroll arrive is done, so that we do in the finance uh, side. Okay. So that is the third process group. Okay. So once it is done, the last one is the periodical activities, all kind of reportings. Okay. All kind of reporting or so dashboard or reporting. When I say reporting, uh, there are some compliance uh, reportings, monthly compliance or yearly compliance. Okay, so those kind of uh, reportings or compliance related activities or any kind of off cycle payroll. When I say off cycle payroll, what is the meaning? So off cycle payroll can come under the second process or second uh, bucket also. So whenever you are not running the payroll on a regular basis, rather on a specific date to pay the reimbursement amount or some ad hoc payment amount, say bonus, okay, that can be in one time, in once in a year, once in a while, depending upon your organization, okay, that you do not uh, run on the regular payroll cycle, okay, so that is that actually comes under your off cycle payment so that can be in the, in the run payroll activity that is second process group or it can be if it is in a re reimbursement and it comes can also come under the fourth periodical activities so what are the tax filing or individual employee tax filing okay or any any activities jo, that, that we do on a periodical on a regular basis that comes under your periodical activities so, so these are four major process groups okay. Okay. So any questions okay. here? Uh, no, good. All good. Yeah. So this is a L0 processor. So whether you are running an SAP payroll or Valde payroll or Oracle has same whatever the payroll. So these four process group remains at the same. So we'll be coming to the L1 process now. Okay. So when I say L1 process, we'll be discussing one by one. So when I say L1, first we'll be discussing the Pre payroll. So here you can see the code also the 50, 10, 50, 10, then 10 to 60, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. So these are the things we do in pre payroll activities. Okay. So when I say pre payroll, the first one is the initiate payroll period. Okay. So what is the meaning of the initiate payroll period? That means you are switching from one period to another period. Okay. So suppose I have run the I have already run the payroll for December 2019. Okay. So once I'm I'm done with my December 2019 payroll, I'll be switching my control record. There's a concept of control record that I'll be coming into later on. Yeah. Yeah. You are aware of control record? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So yes. yeah. okay. So then uh, when you start the initiate payroll period, just there is a switch not a switch exactly that's a time period that changes when you exit the previous pay control record it moves to the next control uh, next month control record 
okay that we call actually the initiate payroll period that means we started or initiated the payroll period for the first month of 2020 okay so that is the first activities that first process okay so once you have already moved to the then you can't uh, do anything in the uh, as you are already done with the december 2019 so you can't do any changes in the means logically you can't do the changes but there is a something called, called retro concept that i'll be coming to later on okay so no, logically you have moved yeah. from december 2019 to uh, your january 2020 that that is a concept or that is a definition of the initiate payroll period it means you have initiated or started the payroll current payroll period that is your 2020 january okay that is the first process group uh, under pre pre payroll so once it is done second one is the manage master data for payroll so it is an uh, again uh, regular process like uh, for though whatever the master data has been updated suppose there are some uh, employee event in that particular month suppose uh, say some few n number of employees has joined and m x x number of employees joined and y number of employees left so those master data will be uh, you will be checking although you'll be downloading some reports or so you'll be checking uh, any updated to be done updation to be done in the master data. that is the activity we'll be doing in the second process when is master master data payroll okay so when it's done so third one is the import external data for payroll okay so when i say import external data for payroll so what is the meaning of that so you will be using some programs uh some import programs so to update particular info information okay say say you around it's a large organization and attrition is high and you have around say 600 500 500 600 people new new people join in the month of january 2020 and around say 100 to 200 people they left the organization so you'll not be going doing these activities manually right so there will be an import files you will be using those import files to update a particular information say hiring in that hiring of employees some particular uh, payroll specific data which employees may not have updated that you need to update it that you would like to update okay by using that particular import for functionality okay so there are many import tools available so in that import tool you'll be whatever the data is required okay that data will be those delta data will be updating from that particular uh, which is payroll specific data okay that you will be importing in that in this third process so for that reason we call it uh, import external data for payroll okay so it can be tax authority data it can be any data so which is a specific to requirement in the payroll <clears throat> in the particular month okay so that is a third so it is that, any any change uh, that happening to the system in bulk Either, uh, yes, yes, multiple yes. Yeah. exactly exactly so the, the, to differentiate between the second and third process so when i say manage master data for payroll it can be some la small data or it can be some sort of yeah. five or ten employees Just a couple when of I records say, a few records yeah yeah five or which can, we can be handled manually but the third one when i say when i say import your import tools whatever we are available in your success factor so we'll be using the bulk so when I say import, it will be bulk, it refers to bulk uh, people. Okay, so all the people who have a lot of data will be capturing. Okay, so that will be. So second and third process, it talks about you know updating the data. Okay, whether you are doing it manually or it doing a bulk program. Okay, so after it is done, then the fourth process is talks all about the quality of the data. Okay, check payroll data quality. Okay, so when I say check, so there is a intuitive dashboard which is already available in the ec payroll so in that you can also use or also you can download the reports to check the valid validate whether my all the data whatever required for the payroll it is um, good in, in good quality or not okay so when i say quality so we'll be seeing what are the different data quality so that during your uh, the upcoming sessions we'll be seeing what are the parameters when i say check where the payroll data quality what can be the parameters different parameters of the quality of the data quality that we'll be seeing later on but for the timing we understand uh, whether all the data if anything missing or any redundancy of the data is there okay so it may happen right so again you have to go back to the 
HR to update so those kind of information that we'll be seeing um, the check payroll data quality part. So that is the fourth process. Fifth one is the process core HR data alert. Okay, so this is the another one alert and the last one is a process payroll data alert. Okay, so what is the difference? So fifth process talks about the core HR data. Sixth process talks about the payroll data. Okay, so when I say core HR data, it is refers to the employee central data. Okay, so core HR means employee central data. Payroll data means specific to your payroll. Okay, suppose so fifth and for the fifth and sixth process, you have to design your alert also. The system has a capability to design okay. the alert. Okay. Suppose you are designing an alert, say core HR data. Suppose there is a, if the bank data is missing, you have written a business rule that automatically system will give a notifications to the payroll process manager or who is taking care of the payroll. So he will be getting a notification like uh, say it is not that towards the end of the month whenever you are initiating the, um, the payroll rather on the day itself. Okay, suppose today is my joining. Suppose uh, today Niladri joined uh, an organization and he um, as soon as I join if I'm not updating by end of the day some specific payroll related data my payroll admin or my payroll process admin who is taking care of my payroll he'll be getting the same on the day one itself and by end of the day itself he'll be getting an alert that he has not updated he has joined recently but he has not updated his yeah. uh, so and so data okay core hr data okay so those kind of alert can be highly configured so again it depends upon system comes up with a system whenever if you are using rds rapid deployment solution system comes up with a specific uh, set of alert which you can leverage yeah. But if you are not using, still you can use those. You can configure. Yeah, understood. Okay. So those kind of data alert you can configure and you can set up. Okay. Whether it is a employee central data or it is a payroll. Okay. That is the demonstration of the yeah. how how the alert will works and how this. Okay. So these are the six level. Okay. The six different processes in the L1 process. So what I will do, I will not be covering the L2 in detail. So I will recommend. It, you to go through the L2 process in detail. So L2 processes, they have described oh, who will be take, doing what. Okay, so this is one of the example of L2 processes. Okay, so as I was explaining, uh, generally it is done by the payroll manager. So once the last period's payroll is closed, so there will be a payroll calendar for depending upon the particular um, organization. And depending yeah. upon, okay, so that will be done yeah. by a payroll manager, and they will be going for the next payroll calendar. Okay. This is just an example, one of the example of uh, okay. L2 process. I'll not be going very details. So similarly for master data also, you can see like in the master data update, you can see all the employee event, the left hand side. Okay. So here you can see all the hiring, termination, transfer. Okay. So in that case, what are the things you have to update? Okay. So one thing I have to call out here. Here in some of the uh, slides, you can see uh, there is a violet for purple color. Okay. Can you see that? <coughs> so for the basic transitions of the event happening in uh, success sector, relative, uh, you know, the activity or data maintenance activity be created in the payroll, and yes. then it will be assigned to respective people or parties. Yes. They will take care of that, and the payroll manager will run the payroll. Okay. Yeah, so so that is fine. So here, Nitin, here you can see there is some purple color. So can you guess what can be okay. that, uh, that particular uh, purple color signification? What is the significance of that particular uh, purple color? So what I understand, yeah, what I understand from that is all the data that we are changing is success factor with the batch job run the back end, it is replicating to ECP or the related payroll system yeah it's correct so here what is the main focus area whenever you see in this process library uh the wherever there is a violet uh, color it is specific to targeting to the ec payroll activities you can see the data replication okay so when i say data replication employee receive employee data check data replication status so all these are part of a ec payroll specific um, activities data replication there's something called data replication monitor that we'll be seeing in the upcoming sessions okay so similar the ec mess up yeah. okay maintain payroll specific data okay so 
uh, in that case ec mass up so your whatever your fields or info types you are having in the on premise that you will be able to see in your uh, ec payroll okay so all those payroll data specific data okay. and the specific data okay so here you can see there are some specific information which is generally happens in the us pay payroll specific like garnishment social security some of you other things are not there for not is very generic this process are not country and these are con con not country specific okay yeah that's so fine that's you fine design as yeah. for your requirement okay so i'll not be going very details into that just uh, go through and if you have any queries then yeah. in the upcoming session you can ask me so i'll be just quickly going through similarly for external data what are the external source as i was mentioning okay so there are different different logs import logs external logs there are some how to fix those okay. so these are all, all basic things okay so similarly for payroll data quality check what are the things activity will be doing okay so that test results test uh, payroll alert here you can see all of the i'll call out one point here in the check payroll data quality the pcc come into picture okay. payroll control center which will be discussing specifically towards the end of four to five session dedicated for pcc okay payroll control center okay how it works and all that will be covering the details in, in that at that point of time okay so check payroll data quality is one of the key activities for yeah. your payroll control center which is considered as the heart of the employee central payroll that will be discussing towards the end okay pcc okay so here all the pcc activities whenever you are doing those kind of those tools is actually highlighted here okay that is a payroll data quality so similarly assigning the payroll alert is also another process so processing a core hr data alert okay so just go through these uh, processes okay so you have access to so similarly for okay. l1 process i'll be just focusing so when i say l1 process running the payroll uh, so here we have again run payroll means that is a regular payroll run run off cycle payroll means that is an off cycle payroll run just like your reimbursement or any kind of um, bonus payment okay. ad hoc payments ad hoc, ad hoc payments all kind of okay so when i say run payroll yeah. so here you also you can see pcc plays a major role you can see in lot of all our uh, yellow color box in the top of that you can see there is a pcc option here okay so what are the activities we do and what are the activities so all the parallel activities just go through this in entire process once okay so just i focus on l0 and l1 process but l2 processes can vary depending upon your organization or clients so specific process there can be uh, one or two processes you can skip depending upon your scenarios okay so that is uh, run payroll similarly for run off cycle payroll only thing is the period will be different okay so you don't have to wait uh, till the month end rather as and when it is required okay but it can be so in these two slides you can see there is an integration between your once your run payroll is done there is a integration between a fico module what they have mentioned is a finance and controlling that is nothing but your uh, fico okay okay so, so here you can see uh, in send total expected payments for info when a, what data is outgoing from the um, payroll that is the send total expected payment so Suppose there are thousand employees. So, for for total thousand employees, what is the total amount of the payment you are doing? Okay, that data finance requires. That does. Okay. So once it is done, then again, if any, what are the data incoming from Fico? Like if any, you are having any discrepancies. Okay. Some cost entry is not matching. Okay. So debit and credit is not matching. Okay. So that means some one of the one or two employee has you are not you have not paid. okay depending upon the master data okay that can be one of the issues okay so those kind of information will be capturing getting will be getting those kind of reports or problems and if any okay so generally that doesn't happen if your integration before integration on c you are posting itself many many of the problems solved 99% problems are solved resolved okay so this is the kind of back and forth will happen between your uh, payroll to fico it is not only the ec payroll since yeah, okay. your premise okay so this kind of activities will be happening in your off cycle and all so okay next one is the okay post payroll as i was mentioning what are the activities uh, we do in the uh, posting the payroll so basically we have uh, like executing the payroll payments so there is a transactions how to run the payroll uh, all the payments happens 
once it is done your posting will be happening there is another transaction code so when i say transaction code or t code that's the refers to your on premise days activities okay so those activities will be done uh, in the finance okay mostly so then the execute payroll reporting so all the reporting so so available although it is available in your ec payroll those reports also can be downloadable in your on premise also okay so that will be discussing in the post payroll so similarly the post payroll all the bank payment bank information okay how well, there is if there is any approving authorities okay so that will be also done in the in this executing the payroll payment okay so this is all about you know, in details you can go through and this is just generic process l1 l2, l2 process is basically generic one or depending upon your uh, setup client specific scenarios you can modify okay you can take it as a model okay so so just like any other modules you take it as a model okay, okay you can yeah. change okay. so that is the uh, things you have to do similarly whenever it comes to here and activities all the tax filing and all hmm. so those things how it happens how who will be doing what so here you can see web gui when i say web gui so if you may refer some third party your uh, websites to complete those activities okay so those kind of uh, okay. examples also come into picture if you are using adp adp payroll uh, or some other interface okay along with your current process that also will be coming into picture here the web gui all about that so this is all about your uh, l0 l1 l2 processes l2 processes you it is your assignment uh, to go through those l2 processes in details okay. if any terminology or anything you just uh, if you are missing or if sure. you are not able to understand sure. today just let me know, you go, go through the topic and let me know if you can ping also you can otherwise to can ask tomorrow but any specific okay. uh, block if you don't understand okay that is the things here. this is all about your so payroll l0 l1 and l2 processes good to go shall we go to the next page yeah we can move here yeah. yeah so next space we will be going for the basics of australian payroll so as you are already staying there so when many of the stuffs you are already knowing okay so but the slides which i have already prepared those are actually to start from very basics okay like first of all i just started with the demographies and also i'll not be type focusing much here so you just you are most part of this melbourne right so victoria so this part of the part of this country so so i'll not be covering much yes, yes. Uh, lot of very details the, all the geographies also are captured so i'll not be boring you you are already aware of uh, six largest country and all. No, sure. okay so yes the generic information this slides anyway i'll be sharing so don't worry so monetary unit one australian dollar 100 cents so what is the gni what is the all these things just captured for, for a completion point of view okay so six states 10 territories i forgot to mention the time zones as well <laughs> i could <laughs> okay so three internal territories seven okay. internal territories so i'm not focusing going into details so yeah so national employment standard so this i'll be coming so are you aware of uh, anything about NES? Heard of it, that's all. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So national as employment standards, nothing but actually it is in the policies of my Australian government and which uh, regulates uh, what should be your maximum hours of work, what to be your paid and underpaid leave. Okay. So notice of uh, whenever you are terminating the employees, of what should be the notice period, what should be the redundancy phase. Okay, so all those it is applicable for some of the state public sector employees. So what are the possible so rules and regulations as the Australia as per the Fair Work Act? So there is an act on 2009. They have ruled it out. Okay, so depending upon that uh, particular act, what are the do's and don'ts? So generally, it is in the organization is bound to follow this kind of standards. Okay. So that is a NEA standard. So this is just a, nothing to do with your pay, means uh, your uh, overall EC payroll, rather from a payroll point of view, what an agent HR, suppose an HR administrator or a payroll administrator is working. So what during the policy designs, okay, so they have to abide by these laws. Yeah. Nothing is okay. This is the uh, yeah. national employment standards. Okay. 
so this is a so when i say income tax and social security in australia the australia financial year runs on the 1st july to 30th of june Okay, that is your financial Correct. Year. Yes. So you have already spent three years there, right? So you will know better. Yeah, I'm filed my, filed my taxes, man. Yeah, I've done that. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. <laughs> good, good, good. So it is uh, regulated by the ATO. We call it our ATO, mm -hmm. uh, Australian Taxes and Office, just similar to Income Tax Department of India. So that is an now governing authority. So which is just uh, if I never required, I'll give you an analogy because you are already work in India and was so I'll give you an analogy. So yeah. <laughs> so it is easy to that, that's all right yeah it's yeah. good to relate yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah so that is an income tax uh, financial year and uh, these are some tax season that we call it tax season so for current financial year you are not uh, started it will be starting on the july to october okay that is your tax season so during that time you generally report to the authorities tax authorities like uh, file all the filing and happens okay. for 2019 20 so july 2019 to 30 june 2020 that is your uh, financial year okay so this is just a basic one okay so as i was mentioning the tax uh, date ato australian tax office uh, <laughs> takes care of it and uh, whether it is an employee's resident or not there are some variations okay so for an also whenever it is required i just highlighted the major one so whenever if you are paying the tax session so within seven days of funds being withheld from the <coughs> so this we have to understand so similarly the tax gets paid monthly by the 21st of the next month okay so it will be suppose your current month okay so for part of the taxes means it is from an organization point of view not an employee point of view okay because the organization has to pay the total tax and so it should be by the monthly to by the 21st of the next following month that is the timeline so uh, this one i'll be asking to you because i'm not uh, sure how much so in terms of superannuation what is the percentage you are doing it is the for any, any idea you have yeah this is yeah sometimes i mean this is correct as of now 9.5 is good 9.5 only right so yeah this is right okay this is correct so this is a superannuation yes. so for employees is similar to our pef if i am correct correct me if i am wrong correct okay okay so yes. generally you're right you're right yeah this capping again uh, depends upon the years to year but at present currently it is 9.5 percent that we call 9.5 percent of the ordinary time earning so means total your whatever your earning that that is actually to pay the superannuation for the employees okay so this is actually the cap can change and also employees and on an options to increase their contribution okay just like we have in india we voluntary, voluntary pay we can increase similarly voluntary pay. Also, yeah it is from the pre-tax dollars so whatever the australian dollar pre-tax okay you can increase your contribution okay and uh, what is the timeline for superannuation that is by the organization 28th of the particular month or subsequent mm -hmm. part that is from a superannuation point of view so these are the basic policies uh, uh, when it comes to superannuation and similarly from an organization point of view all the organization working in australia they must uh, have to obtain an uh, ABN and TFN. your yeah. abn and tfn okay that is your australian business number and the tax file number hmm. so from ato they have to capture uh, and similarly there is an authority again AST asic australian securities and investment commission which which is actually part of the same government but which uh, generally regulates the incorporation and administration of the companies okay. so in in case of any subscription okay. company then they, they have to within a week they have to report if anything happens so that is just an from a knowledge point of view and these are the websites uh, australian taxes and ato fair work and uh, asic dot gov au so the, for further information you can go and uh, every time uh, in, in the next year if you would like if you'd like to see anything new then you have to follow these uh, specific websites. These are the official websites where you generally are already aware of. Similarly, when it comes to social security, so at present, just I'll be asking to you: Are you doing anything in in this bucket in contribution for social security, um, or is it optional? No, 
So I think we are not doing that. We are not doing that, but again, it is an optional. Okay, so it's the kind of for yes. that reason I have used the terminology here called salary sacrifice is before tax. Suppose if you are doing anything, say there's a particular bucket also, and uh, if the maximum amount of consistent superannuation is there, okay, and depending upon your age, you, it is varies. Okay, if the individual is aged uh, 49 or over, then it is up to there's a capping. Okay. Up to thirty-five thousand Australian dollar per annum. If you are below forty-nine, then it will be up to thirty thousand Australian dollar per annum. Okay. So the uh, idea is to kind of uh, employees deduction will really happening, and uh, it will pay to the government agency for the particular six of the particular month. Okay. So that you can get uh, some tax saving. So that is the only purpose. Just like similar in India, I'll be giving another example. It is our uh, yeah. NPS. National pension scheme, which is not a compulsory thing, right? Correct. Okay, so Correct. it is an Correct. option of an employee whether to contribute or not. Okay, if it is, it is already. Yeah. Paid, but this last year, for from personally speaking, I have contributed last year. I started contributing last year. Okay, so it is okay. 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 the choice. Choice, choice is given to the employee whether they would like to go it or not. So for a tax saving purpose. Okay, so that is the only thing here. The last point is also important mm -hmm. here. You can see an employee whose total contribution in a year exceed the contribution. Yeah, you can see that. That is that is liable to tax. Suppose uh, if you are crossing a limit, then you have to pay some additional tax on the additional access. I understand. Rate. That is the point here. That yeah. Regarding Got the it. Activity. Okay. Once it is done, so next one is important for uh, Australian payroll uh, reporting from a reporting or tax point of view. What are the reports generally? Uh, and when, at what frequency generally you, as an HR or HR, HR payroll admin, what are the uh, payroll uh, reports they will be running? It can be your tax report. It can be the different calculations of the superannuation report. And these reports generally to be submitted 7th of each month. Okay, so depending upon your uh, companies, okay, so it have to be deposited. And those reports are readily available in um, on-premise uh, or payroll. Uh, SAP payroll and that you can replicate into the EC payroll also those report also we can uh, download and you have to send it to the authorities and all similarly when it comes to the yearly payroll so there are some specific reports okay prince benefit tax or some uh, some payroll payment summary yeah. certificate those things actually you require to report them so similarly there are some two things uh, business activity statements IAS that is your installment activity statement so this activity set statement you have to deposit and if you have to register for GST. Mm. So these are the few things so you have to remember from a BAS and IAS point of view. So some basic reports again. Okay. So when it comes to the tax, so now I'll be coming to the tax rate. So you're already aware of, I'll be directly going to the current one and not be so historical, I'll not be showing. So four types of individual taxpayers in Australia, residents, foreign residents, children, and uh, working holiday makers okay. so generally people fall into the first two residents or foreign residents okay so and there are some specific uh, tax rates for 2019-20 this is the current uh, tax rate and uh, like up to eighteen thousand two hundred dollars there is no tax okay similar the category in 18 2001 to 37 thousand dollar 19 cent for each dollar over eighteen thousand two hundred. so you don't have to worry about it this system automatically calculates yes okay you don't have to calculate it and like uh, if you like yeah. to manually check anything then you can use a calculator already available yes, yeah. the government, government website and uh, sap is compliant to that okay so whatever this you can't uh, configure means generally what happens this kind of configurations whether it is an indian payroll australia payroll us payroll canada payroll any country payroll SAP, whenever this tax slab changes sap comes up with a note okay. sap notes and uh, by applying that particular note or there are some manual changes to be done in the system SAP will be clearly men mentioning those uh, configurations and those configurations okay. Once, once okay. Done, so these labs will be coming you know, whenever i'll be showing the tax specific uh, tables okay, where exactly it gets captured generally and by applying that note or by doing those manual changes i understand automatically yeah. those uh, things gets updated you don't have to worry about it system whenever you're running the payroll automatically this I understand. Are taken care okay so that is the total resident tax rates for 1920 
so I'll not be going details in 1890. I'm not worried about it. Similarly, foreign residents, there is a different slabs. Okay, so yeah. Okay, so you are how have you calculated your things? So how will you be coming under this one or the before one? Just for my resident understanding. one. This resident one, all right. You have already resident one. Resident one, you are okay. Okay, you fall into this set to 1920. Good, good. Yeah. So foreign resident taxes is not uh, then a federal budget whenever it is required then that will be on and people under 18 how it will be treated okay so for people under 18 so again there are some policies like accepted person how there's some little bit difference variation of the changes okay similarly people who yeah. are on holiday working holiday is actually it is yeah this i understand you understand you already understand so i'll not be going into details of it yeah i, I this Visa, yeah. your working day, holiday maker, if you have a visa, there are different kinds of visa subclass and also for one you already experienced, so I'm not going into details on that. Okay. Now towards the end, last point is a fair work ombudsman. So what is that? So it is an uh, it is it requires Yeah, this is the authority to, de uh, leave, to design those policies and design those policies uh, documents. And, uh, for policies and also your leave regulations also. And it's ideally, these are the yeah. set of leaves uh, to be configured whenever in your EC or whatever, depending on the policy and design the policy. These are the set of uh, types Correct. of Australia. So, are you availing all this, or you are not still nothing means one or two missing in your <laughs> just for uh, and no, all good, all, all good. good, all of yeah. you are following, right? So, you are <laughs> regulated as per your this fair man, fair yeah. ombudsman, Australian government. So yeah. again, this is uh, not very specific. This is a very generic one. It has, uh, I think you are working more than that. Yeah, than we can skip <laughs> this. Yeah, okay, we okay. can skip these things. Okay, we can skip. Okay. okay. So uh, are you aware of STP? STP is an end of regulations. Like all the Australia government, actually they have asked uh, single touch for a payroll. Okay. So it should be some regulation. This is a very, not very old. Okay. 2018-17, they have uh, started it. So our EC payroll is already compliant of this. So from an EC payroll point of view, okay, I'll just telling that uh, it is in line with your whatever the government has uh, given author means authorization. So single touch payroll means uh, there should not be many manual intervention and all. Okay, that is the core idea. Okay, you can go through this details. Right now. Uh, so next one is then whenever you need new employees, what are the <laughs> activities? You this is again. Uh, Specific to onboarding as well as the payroll. So mm -hmm. I generally cover this yeah. as, uh, an onboarding also. So TF and declaration form you have to do, and that should be done. Must be otherwise you'll be directly forty-seven point five five percent tax. <laughs> so that's so yeah, be I know. You're not filling that. So these are the basic information. Okay. Similarly, people who are leaving this again onboarding thing. Okay, so what are the things they have to do? So, okay, so those regulations I just uh, mentioned here. Okay. So this is the towards the end and uh, pay as you go. That is a policy. Okay. So depending upon your a uh, different different agreements and all. So again, I'm not be direct. It's not very clear. So when it comes to SAP payroll solution provider like SAP regulates compliant with all the things whatever we have discussed. Okay. Similarly, the pay slips must be issued in the one working day of the salary payment. Suppose today we are paid. With the next one day, your pay slip must be there in your ESS. Similar the payroll reports yeah. from an archiving point of view, last point is important. You have to remember, like uh, what okay. are the payroll reports you are uh, maintaining it, it, as per the Australian for the last seven years. Uh, Australian government is required um, to maintain all the data related to the, of the at least for the seven years. More than seven years is good, but at least seven years uh, from the you have to should be captured. Okay, I understand. That is taken care by that is taken care by your archiving any archiving module that archiving. That should be there in your so whenever you're implementing your EC or any satisfactory module, uh, it's always recommend to use kind some kind of archiving tools as well. So that is the overall uh, today's session, um, Nitin. So any questions or any expectations from other than that? It's just very it's very basic thing I discussed. Started with yeah, now all good processes I mean... and uh, we'll be going ahead in the very deep details. Okay. And second one is the very basics of the process in Australia specific payroll. In the upcoming session, I will be, next session basically will be starting with the 
your uh, info types what are the mandatory payroll info types when it because on premise is also important what are the many activities to be done in your on premise so before we have, okay okay so what i will be doing i'll be sending a document today this is a very comprehensive document have you worked on paom any chance or uh, your your brand yeah i'm across okay yeah I mean, I'm not worked on these things, but I'm across P and O M things, and okay. how do we maintain it? I M G tool and some, some okay. details okay. around that. Okay. So, okay. so you're so already. We, uh, we will try to. Okay. Okay. So what I will do? I'll be sharing this document. Generally, I share this document, which who people who are very not very new. I rather I will say it is also re, I, helpful for me generally to refresh something. So suppose I would like to revisit. I don't have to revisit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I'll be sharing this document, which I actually uh, taken in around 2013, 20, 14, 13, 14 around. So this document, uh, if you see, it's a comprehensive, very comprehensive document. Uh, so in this document, all the on-premise modules are covered in a very crisp way. Okay. So here I'll be uh, okay. just asking you to just uh, don't have to read uh, line by line, rather. Sure, I'll sure, I understand. I'll go through those things. Uh -huh. so, uh -huh. yeah. so there are some basic. So, things. Couple of things. Okay. Chapter one. Yeah, sure, we'll go through that. that. Okay, I'll be sending this today itself, and you have to go through the chapter number. I'll just mentioning chapter number three. Recruiting is not required at all. Chapter that is that. Uh, if sure. you see, send me see. the document and uh, the set. Yeah, Niladri, send me the document and uh, the items that you want me to go through. Yeah, yeah. And uh, also, if there is, for example, whatever X, Y, or Z we are going to cover hmm. for the next day, if there is something that uh, you want me to get heads up yes. beforehand mm -hmm. to let me know this is just to save time and uh, yeah, to yeah. keep the yeah. momentum in the momentum, session momentum yes, okay. yes understood yeah, yeah so what i will be telling you so generally uh, whenever you're running configuring the on premise system also how to do it in a very timely manner here you can see from this topic let's say chapter number 4 pa configuration in less than 24 okay. hours means the writer I, what i like this about this book is they have written a very crispy way, manner and they have not skipped anything which is critical for any kind of uh, say system setup when i say when i'm setting up a sure. system there are some prerequisites so what i will say i will just say you the chapter number four you can go through and chapter number three okay so you know, right. so this that. These two chapters, you can just have a glance. Okay, I'll not be stating you go line by line. Rather, it will be having a glance. And also, whenever you are having a system, okay, so um, these are the activities to be done on premise at the first. Okay, so this setup will be done. So just to go through this chapter number three and chapter number four. If you have any questions, you can ask me tomorrow. Okay. 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 So similarly, the chapter number six uh, will be go covering in subsequent days okay it will take eight to nine hours okay so to complete the chapter number six i'll be going into details of that because i'll be focusing on the pcr schemas also generally that is the heart of the on-premise payroll as i was mentioning uh pcc that is the payroll control record this is the heart of your ec payroll similarly this pcr these are the personal calculation rules okay so those are the heart of your on-premise payroll okay with uh, ec okay. payroll comes into picture it doesn't mean that pcr is ignored nothing like that so pcr will play a strong role yeah. and that is the one of the strongest and uh, most powerful uh, features of the on premise payroll uh, which most of the leading other payroll vendors they couldn't compete with sap and that is the one of the usp for uh, your sap payroll people go ahead with this um, payroll with that okay that will be covering totally okay. okay so that is the overall okay. idea okay so that's all for the today and uh, i'll be sharing this document shortly today it's now itself and we'll be seeing okay. tomorrow okay 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 Niladri. okay thank you very much Nitin. Uh, big, any question other thanks yeah, yeah thanks man okay have a good day bye you too bye, bye.